John 4.10. Respondet Jesus et dixit ei, si scires donum dei, et quis est qui dicit tibi da mihi bibere, tu forsitan petisses ab eo, et dedisset tibi aquam vivam. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me something to drink, you, perhaps, would have asked of him, and he would have given to you living water. This is Jesus' quite stunning response, which creates all kinds of intrigue uh, in the mind of this Samaritan woman and leads to all the wonderful things that happen next in the passage. And the primary feature here that we should focus on is this big conditional sentence here which lasts just about all the way down here. So this is in the context of a quotation. Jesus replied or responded and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, and here's a quotation within the quotation from a few verses before, give me something to drink, maybe add a comma here, you perhaps, etc. So what kind of condition is this? There's all sorts of different kinds of conditional sentences in Latin. You can consult your textbook of choice to look at those, whether that's Wheelock or Lingua Latina or Bennett or whatever it is that you use to answer your grammatical questions. But this is a sort of hybrid of two of the most common types and, and of those which are easiest to recognize. So it's a pleasant topic to talk about. What we've got here is a hybrid contrary to fact conditional, sometimes called a counterfactual or contrafactual. There's all kinds of different names for them. It depends on which grammar you're using. Different grammarians prefer different terms as always. If we want to deploy a contrary to fact conditional to describe a current state of affairs like this, if we want to say, if you could hear the bells, you would go to church. We use the imperfect subjunctive, typically in Latin. And in fact, that's what we find here in skires. So in my made-up example, again, let's say, if you could hear the bells, you would go to church, means there's a, there's a state of affairs that could presently be in effect, theoretically, but is not. And this is the, this is the contra, contra or counterfactual element in these conditional sentences is we're envisioning a possibility that has sort of expired. It's not something that is happening. It could have happened, but it's not happening right now, or it could have happened in the past, but it did not happen. It's a way of kind of looking a slant reality. Uh, and that's why we use the subjunctive mood uh, in both present and past contrary to fact conditionals in Latin to indicate kind of the unreality of what we're discussing. That is, these things by nature aren't coming to pass or didn't come to pass, but we're imagining that they are coming to pass or that they had come to pass, what the different result would be. So, si skires donum dei, if you knew, if you now were knowing the gift of God, and not only were you knowing that gift, but you were knowing who it is, who is the one who sang to you, give me some water, because remember Jesus had just said that a few verses earlier. So what's the implication here? If you knew, but you don't. You don't know. And that's, that, that's what provides the drama of this episode is Jesus is going to tell her. She doesn't know yet who he is or why this encounter is going to be so significant for her, but he's going to explain it. But he's drawing attention uh, to this fact, to, to her ignorance of what's going, what's really going on here, and kind of creating some intrigue, and that's going to power the episode as it unfolds. So if you were knowing now the gift of God and who is it who is saying to you, give me to drink, but you're not, you're not knowing those things. And typically what we would expect here in the apodosis, so you may remember this from when you learned Latin originally, the C clause in a conditional sentence is called the protesis. And then the main clause afterwards of the conditional is called the apodosis, the conclusion clause. Condition and conclusion, right? If this were the case, then that would be the case, but they're not. Here, the protesis 
that is the C clause in the conditional, looks like a present contrafactual because we've got the imperfect subjunctive there. But the apodosis features not matching imperfect subjunctives, but actually pluperfect subjunctives. And those generally show up when you've got a past contrafactual. So remember our example of a present contrafactual was if the bells were ringing right now, but they're not, you would go to church, but you're not because the bells aren't ringing or I forget what I said, because you can't hear the bells ringing, whatever. If we wanted to talk about the past though, we'd say if the bells had rung in the past, then you would have gone to church also in the past. And when we want to cast that whole contrafactual back into that realm of past things, which are now, you know, the opportunity's passed, it's gone, it didn't happen, it can't happen, but we're imagining what if it had, we use the pluperfect subjunctive. So what's happening in this sentence is we're combining elements of a present contrafactual with elements of a past contrafactual to make a kind of hybrid, but it makes perfect sense. If you were knowing now the gift of God and who is who it is who is speaking to you, perhaps earlier you would also have known that and you would have asked from him, that is to say from me, right? From the from uh, this person, this is why it's in the third person, from this person who is the one who is speaking to you, you would have, pluperfect subjunctive, sought or asked from him, what would you have asked from him? Living water. And he would have given it. Again, pluperfect subjunctive. But you don't now currently understand or know what the gift of God is. You don't know who it is who's speaking to you. And so earlier, you didn't ask me for living water and I hadn't given it to you because you don't know these things. You don't understand what's going on. So it's relatively easy to understand the sense, but if you peel back a few layers of the Latin here, it's a good excuse to kind of exercise your memory on present and past contrafactuals. And moreover, to remember, even though your textbook will typically give you, for instance, present contrafactual with, a, with an imperfect subjunctive in the protasis and a, an imperfect subjunctive in the apodosis, everything matches up. It's, it's both parts of that conditional indicating a present situation. Things don't always actually happen that way in Latin out in the wild, so to speak. You can actually mix and match different parts of conditional sentences to make kind of hybrid types of conditional sentences. And that's what we see here. But if you understand the basic types, it won't cause you problems. You'll be able to reason your way through it.